When boudoir photography goes wrong. We all know a bad photo when we see one, but we may not know exactly what makes it bad. Sometimes it's really obvious, but sometimes it's not. And while I will absolutely never bring someone else's work onto my channel to speak poorly of it, I offer constructive criticism, I will do image reviews, but I will never badmouth anyone else's work. That is way against my brand and my personal beliefs. But I will bring up my own work and absolutely shred it. So that's what today's video is. I'm going back to my very first boudoir session and I'm gonna tell you how I messed up. I think I picked out eight different photos and what we can learn from those so that you can improve your own boudoir photography based on the mistakes that I've made. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional boudoir photographer in Silicon Valley, California. I've been doing this since 2010 and teaching since 2012. And in 2015, I switched my business over to be boudoir full time and I have not looked back. It has been a wild ride. I've learned a ton along the way and I feel like I've really found my place in the world as this kind of photographer. So when I got started, I had no idea what I was doing. I've never taken boudoir classes. I've never actually taken a photography class. I am entirely self-taught and I never learned traditional boudoir because it never really interested me. So I wanted to learn to do commercial fashion and then apply that to the boudoir space. So when I decided I'm gonna do boudoir photography and it came from a couple of people asking if I would do a session for them, me trying it out and we all liked the results, I needed to build a portfolio and figure out what the F I was doing. So I put out a model call one day to the burlesque community in my area and I said, hey, I'm gonna offer 45 minute photo shoots for free because I I need to figure this stuff out. You'll get the photos afterward. Uh, just show up with whatever boudoir outfits you want, whatever that means to you, and we'll play. And I rented a hotel suite and we did, I don't know, like six hours of shooting that day. It was a lot and people drove in from all over the area and did these photo shoots with me and I'm grateful for that. And at the time, I loved the photos. It's what allowed me to help build my business. But when I look back at that work now, I kind of cringe. So let's dive into some of these photos and I'm gonna tell you what I've learned and what we can do differently now. Okay, so let's dive into the first one. Uh, this one I really loved for a lot of reasons at the time, but now it totally makes me cringe. And there's a few reasons. One of them is this along the left side. That's clipping. Back in 2015, it was what, January 17th of 2015. So yeah, real early that year. I was using... Calumet strobes with pocket wizards because Godox and all that wasn't invented yet. So I could only shoot up to a certain shutter speed before the camera couldn't sync anymore. We didn't have high speed sync yet. So I didn't know that. And a lot of my images have this dark shadowy stripe along the side. It may be tough to see here. Let me bring up my exposure. Yep. So if you look along the right side of the image here, you can see the crisp line of the edge of the photo. But you look on the left side and it's like a fuzzy little gradient along the edge. That's because there was clipping. The shutter speed wasn't timed with the flash. That's generally not an issue anymore. But that is a mistake I made at the time that I didn't know was a thing. All right. So the other things that are cringeworthy about this photo and... None of this has anything to do with the people in the photos. They did a great job. This was me struggling as a photographer. I totally cut off the edge of her foot. Like her toes chopped off in my crop. That That's rookie mistake right there. Also, the back of her hand here is facing the camera, not sideways. That's a rookie mistake. The other arm up underneath her chin, parallel to this arm here. It looks really out of place there. That arm could have been back to show her chest. That would have been way more appropriate. Otherwise, I don't dislike the image. It's a little tilted. That could be fixed. But yeah, the, the clipping, the arm placement, the hand and cropping the toe off. Don't do that. Let's go to the next one. All right, this one, same couch, different person. Uh, some of the things I do like about the image, I like the leg placement here. Her shoulders are turned right from the camera. I like where she's looking. That was cool. But again, 
back of the hand directly facing the camera, that's a no-no, we don't wanna do that. Also, my light, because I didn't know how to really control it yet like I do now, her matte black heels were totally losing her feet in the shadows. In editing, I could probably bring up the shadow, but I don't wanna bring the shadows up on the entire image. I just want to bring it up there. I could do adjustment brushes. But the point is, these are the absolutely the wrong shoes for this environment. Now I know to look out for that sort of thing as a limit to what my lighting style produces. We would just go barefoot or do a different kind of shoe or even now I'd throw a second light in, a spotlight down on the feet. Um, so yeah, controlling that hand. Also, this leg is at 90 degrees from the ground. I don't like that. I would bring that foot back just a little bit or out the other way so that nothing is at 90 degrees. Maybe that's the Tim Burton fan in me because uh, if you check out his movies, specifically Nightmare Before Christmas, that was one of the creative briefs he gave to the set designers and animators no right angles allowed in any scene in that movie. So go back and check it out if you wanna have your mind blown there. Also the way she's holding the jacket reminds me of Napoleon putting his hand in the shirt pocket or in the, you know, in his shirt. That just looks kind of weird. Uh, also, I would edit the little bump caused by the jacket here so it didn't look like she had a, I don't know, horn or something sticking out of her shoulder. A lot of great things happening, but yeah, the feet totally disappear, back of the hand, editing the lumps in the jacket, could have been a lot better. Next one. Then we jumped into the bedroom. A lot of good things happening here as well. The pose isn't terrible. This is like your classic, every beginner boudoir photographer learns this pose. I actually don't even really do it anymore. I have a variation of it that most of my clients buy, but it, it's never shot straight on like this. But the pearl necklace, totally forced. It didn't need to be there. Uh, I should have had her lifted up higher on her shoulders so we could see more of her neck. But where I cropped, garbage. I cut off part of her hand. It's super close to her head on the edge of the frame here. It's just not good. And because of the angle that I'm shooting down, I'm shortening her significantly. If I would have moved the camera to the side and shown more of her body, it would help elongate her. It uh, would have been a lot more flattering. Also, I should have turned that light off in the background because it blends in with her feet. There's just There shouldn't be a bright spot in the background of the image when I want the viewer focused on, well, my subject. So be mindful of light sources and shiny things in the backgrounds. Remove them if you can in camera so that you're not having to do it in post. Uh, again, I don't dislike the pose really. The shape isn't terrible, but so many things that I would do differently now. Uh, firstly, we don't need the heels because she can't put her foot, this left leg here, she can't put that foot flat on the ground wearing these heels. So in this case, wearing heels impedes the pose and they don't need to go, especially because they're black and we lose them in the shadow anyway. Um, what did I do in lighting here? I think I just have my, my softbox directly over her at about 45 degrees coming down, not the side lighting that I, I do now. So we're not even getting the shoes in the light. And if she could have had that foot flat on the ground on this side of her leg, that would have been a lot better. Would have lifted her chin up just a little bit so she'd have some neck or pull her hair off her neck over here. And that hand shouldn't be there because we can't see the arm and it looks like mystery arm is coming out of nowhere. Obviously we know that it's hers. She's wearing gloves on both hands, but generally in portraits when you cannot see the arm and all you can see is a hand, like if it's around somebody else's body, there's this dissonance in our brain that just feels off. So in the beginning when I said, you might not know why an image looks bad, but it doesn't feel right, that is one of those reasons. So I would not have had this hand up here. I could have brought it out up into her hair to see more of the arm which would have also lifted her chin and given her more of a neck. There's a lot of different things I could do there. I do like this pose. I would just do it way, way differently. Also, I'm not perpendicular to her in this pose. I'm kind of a little bit off from perpendicular. I'm not at 45 degrees, I'm not at 90. It's a weird angle in between where I should have adjusted. So mind you, whether it's your lights or your position to the wall, the furniture. I like to keep everything in 45 degree increments, whether it's straight on, 45, at 90, 45 back. 
uh, could be directly overhead, but everything is in 45 degree angles from whatever everything else is. Okay. Cool. So this one, again, it's classic boudoir pose. I did an absolutely garbage job of cropping this. I'm cropped through her elbow, through her arm, through her hand. It's way too close to the edge of her head, to her hip over here, this wrist. So many great things about this image. And then I ruined it with my crop. Now, mind you, I could crop back out of here, but at the time, this is what I thought was the best option for this photo. I love the softness of the hand here. Even though the hand is sort of facing the camera, it's turned away a little bit. Um, this one as well, it's not directly to the camera. It's tilted back just a little bit. But where I cropped all the way around this photo is absolutely terrible. Great expression though. Good focus on the eyes. And I believe I shot this with my Canon 5D Mark II, Mark III. And, all right, what did I have in 2015? That was a Mark II, uh, where you had to manually adjust the focal point. So to get that sort of expression and engagement out of somebody while manually adjusting the focal point, definitely more challenging back then. So again, if I could recrop this thing and do it differently, I totally would. I mean, I guess I can, but I'm, I'd rather just shoot it right next time. Okay, here's another one. I still do this pose, and this one looks fantastic. Um, and the way it's lit here in this photo is the way that I do it now. The things that I would look out for now that I didn't know back then, this is sort of Rembrandt lighting. We've got the highlights on her cheek, but because the curls in her hair, we get these weird shadows on her face. She is so close to being turned properly into the light to get the right sort of effects there. Uh, I would definitely want to tweak that. And then I'm cropped through her feet, which is not okay. <laughs> uh, definitely too close there. Uh, I think I'm not, you know, again, I if I move the crop line back to show her feet, I'm also a good distance from her booty over there. But I like the pose. I love the angle, everything else. I would absolutely either get rid of the pillows in the background or I would straighten them up so they look a little neater, a little more organized. There is some artistic value to having a tussled bed when you're shooting boudoir, but you can style that tussle to not look distracting and like there's a junk pile in the back of the image. So definitely should not have cropped. I should have straightened up the photos, fixed where the light comes through her curls and turned her chin just a little bit more toward the light. Also, she's down on her knuckles like a gorilla would walk. Um, also not great. I would just have her down on her hands or like this. Here's another one. I love the pose. I still do this sometimes. The lighting is a lot better on her, but I'm cropped through her fingers on her hand down here. And it was one of those, I had 10,000 things in my mind. I didn't know what I didn't know. And so I've learned a lot since then. I can look back on these and know the mistakes that I made. Also, the pillows leave this jagged line in the background, which is super distracting when we want soft curves in a boudoir photo. We don't want hard angular patterns in the background. So again, I could have pulled those pillows totally off the bed, which a bed without pillows does not look out of place in a boudoir shoot. I do it all the time and I'll tell you when. If you notice, her bra is black and it's a matte fabric. It doesn't reflect a ton of light. The backboard or the headboard here is also very dark. It doesn't reflect any light. So if I remove the pillows and her boobs blend into the background, there's no separation there, I'm gonna put the pillows back. However, if she was wearing white, I would remove the pillows so the, the contrast of the bra against the headboard would be more noticeable and create that separation. So the pillows I have on the bed in my studio, I now include the pillows when it creates separation and I remove them when I need to do that to create separation. And again, I have the light on in the background which distracts from the subject that we wanna see in the picture. So if the light doesn't add some sort of stylistic element or serve a purpose to illuminate an important part of the room, it needs to go. All right, and for our last one here, uh, again, this is a solid pose, but I did it wrong and I cropped it absolutely terribly. Uh, also, rookie mistake, I bought a ton of feathers, so many feathers, and we laid them out all over the bed. And we got some great shots of her rolling in it and 
and having a great time with the feathers. But holy smokes, did it take forever to clean up. And yes, it was in a hotel room, but I'm not going to force the staff to have to clean up all the feathers that got all over the floor. They probably would have taken away my deposit as well. So many reasons that I should have just cleaned that up. I still have all these feathers eight years later and I haven't touched them since because I don't want to clean them up. So her hand here that's clutching the feathers looks weird because we lose her elbow and the whole middle of her arm. Expression is great. I love this arm here, the way it's comfortably resting on her hip. I should have removed that little feather and the feather on her bra there. Because it's one thing to have things as part of a scene, but when it gets messy and sloppy like that, it looks sloppy. Also, her top leg is behind the bottom leg. If I would have brought it forward so the knee could get lower on the bed, it would really have accentuated the curve of that hip even more. So that's what I do now. I bring the top leg forward of the bottom leg and it really accentuates the curve of the hip and the booty right there. I love the light on her face. I love the expression. Again, so many great things about this, but picking up those little feathers that are on her and making sure I could see the other arm. But again, it's cropped way too tightly. I don't mind cropping through the top of the head. There is a proper place to do that, but this is not it. And I'm just cropped in way too tight on her bottom hip here. It's not a good look. So I hope that inspired you because if you look at your first photo shoots and think, wow, this is nowhere near as good as these other people that I wanna learn from, cool, we didn't start there either. This was my first boudoir marathon day where I was learning how to not make all these mistakes. And at the time, these photos were absolutely amazing for me and I loved them and it helped me build my business. And then I got better, but it was good enough because I got started and that's what you should do also just get started so if you want to shortcut a lot of this learning curve you can pick up my posing book i have a really really handy book that'll walk you through about 150 different poses and tell you exactly how to do them plus it's like a posing course in a book there's a ton of great information in there I'll link that down below or head to boudoirguild.com and check out the posing course there where you can watch videos of me telling you how to do all of these different poses the right way. You are amazing. See you inside.